lately I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, winter pruning. Oh, should they cut the trees back? Um, what should they cut? And I just kind of want to show you guys what I do. This tree right here, this one's been in the ground for about six or so years. And you can see I like to keep the middle nice and open. Um, I always kind of try to keep an eye, eye on fruiting wood when I'm cutting. You see all these little spurs are cutting. This guy's out a little bit early. I tend to uh, prune uh, to keep them in dormant too. But this guy, he started coming back out back in November. I thought he'd go dormant once we didn't get any, uh, once the freezes came, but he's kept coming out. Now we're mid-January and he's still out. But the main cuts on this guy I focus on, I like to keep mine about eight and a half feet tall. So I cut him a little bit for height. He's a little bit too tall for me. So I cut him down a little bit for height. And these crossing branches right here, I would probably do away with, I'm probably gonna do away with this guy right here, cut him back to an outward growing bud or something. So you can see how these work is, um, let's see if I can focus right there. You see this little bud right here. Let's see if I can get to focus. You see that little bud right there. If I cut just above this bud, there it is. He's gonna grow out this way. Or if I cut against this bud, he's gonna grow back in towards the middle of the tree. So I'm always gonna prune. I'll probably prune him out this way so he has this room to grow. And that's pretty much all I have with this tree. Probably this guy, I'll cut him back a little bit too. But other than that, I really like the way that the structure is going on this tree. And let me show you this guy. See how my duck's right there? They're hoping for some food. <laughs> this guy right here, you can see. My mulberry trees, I want those to be big. So you can see that one sticking up over my house. I want them to shade this side of the house because this side of the house gets a little warm, especially during the summertime. Whereas this fig, I don't mind him as long as he takes out kind of the middle of the sun right here because I spend a little bit of money on the AC and so I just want to kind of use the trees to shade the house. But one thing I want to point out here, you can see last year I cut him right here because he started to come out and we were having some... Uh, frosty weather expected so I cut him back so he wouldn't come out and freeze But you can see what happens when you cut him out when you cut him back a lot of times they sprout just after So like I said with that one you cut him to an outward growing bud and you can see this guy He grew to these two outward growing buds right here So he comes out this way and all these ones that kind of grow to the middle. It's gonna cut those back and Like this guy right here. I'll cut him back because it's to the middle, but you can see right where I made my cuts like this right here, you can see just how much they sprout off those cuts. Because I think one of the most important things to realize is when you're cutting them back, when you cut them back, you aren't cutting anything on the roots. So you still have the same root system that this giant tree had. But you're gonna have a smaller tree. You can see right over here, I've cut all these. I just got done cutting this tree back. You see all those cuttings right there. That all came off of one tree. Let me take you back there and show you the tree so you can see it. You can see it's this tree right here. I mean my cutouts. He's he's starting to come out. He's an early tree. This is a Florida king. And you can see I kept this guy a little bit lower. He was over eight feet tall. You can kind of see now he's not nearly as tall as some of the other trees around him. But you can see where I made my cuts always to some kind of outward growing growth. In this case, I've got another tree planted right here. And so I don't mind them sharing this middle right here, but I don't want him intruding into this area. So for him, I kind of wanted him just to kind of finish off the shape right here. And you can see right here, these are my main branches. I have some main branches in here. And the main branches, typically I don't do anything with them unless I just kept them because they had fruit or something on them. But typically the main branches, I just let those grow out and stay out. And I do most of my trim work on the, my little fruiting branches or my little scaffolding branches. I cut those back. But you can see, I really didn't cut any major cuts on the big branches right there. I'll cut them out here just to shorten them. But those branches, that's the main structure. That's what I like. Because, I mean, you can see that nice open center right there. Nothing really to the inside here. It's like a nice air circulation in there. The other thing I want people to focus on when you're doing um, kind of pruning is certain, you look for things like this right here. See, 
that right there, that's uh, sunburn. And this tree actually got a little bit of it here. He had a rough year. Because you can see how that wood's already kind of burned right there. It just makes weak wood. If he ever gets any weight on that, it's just gonna break right there. So anything like that right there. I normally cut that back as much as I can, but sometimes you can see there are main branches or even the trunk, like it's right over here. In that case, I'm not gonna be able to really do anything about that unless I cut them down right down here and just start all over again, which I'm not gonna do that with this tree. It's He's never gonna be as strong as he could be because of that, but that's uh, unfortunately just something I'll have to deal with. And you can see on some of these, some of these right there, it's not nearly as bad on the burn, but you always wanna kinda of look for dead wood. You wanna look for crossing branches, and you just kinda of wanna to cut to the shape you want. If you ever see like a spellier trees, you can see just what you can do with the trees. You can train them and grow them the way that you want to. And for me, it's just, I want them to share this area, and I don't want them in the middle here, because I don't wanna keep whacking my head on branches because as they grow, these branches will slowly get thicker and these will become main branches if I don't cut them back. So as they grow, I just kind of want to make sure I leave my middle open and just make sure they share this one. As you'll find out when you grow, typically your plums and your pears tend to grow more vertical, kind of like in a cylinder shape. So on a lot of times on that, I cut to my outward growing buds and I force them to grow out to the side a little bit but they do tend to just grow straight up that's what they like to do and so slowly I'll get them to kind of just veer out like I like it but because of that I really don't have much trouble with them on the side to side range I just have to keep them checked down and the more I check them down the more uh, kind of lower branches will shoot off like you saw on the fig they're going to shoot branches off after my cuts to kind of just fill in the just kind of push growth because they have this their root system like I said stays the same so they still have a root system that can support this tree right here but when I cut it back they're going to have that root system is therefore going to be a little bit oversized for that tree so it's going to be able to grow a lot quicker it's going to be a stronger tree because of that that's how I see it so I just kind of wanted to just clarify that as far as what I because I always tell people cut the tree as you want the tree you know don't cut it as I show you to cut it cut it as you want to cut the tree and just keep in mind those little tips you know take diseased wood out take any type of crossing branches out because like I said as they get thicker as they get thicker the branches they're just gonna rub against each other and they'll eventually weaken each other if they continue to brush like you'll see against my uh, like you'll see with my peach tree right here I think this is the one you see how it's just kind of go right here. You see how it's just kind of rubbed against that fence and it's just kind of created a little void right there. It's just raw right there. And so that is what will happen if you get two branches that rub against each other once they get big. They'll just kind of eat away at each other. But guys, just let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to comment. If you're interested in any cuttings, just let me know. Um, just cover shipping. And I'll try to send you out as many cuttings as I can. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, Till next time.